Hello everyone. <laughs> yep, the Leica Q. So if you're thinking about the Leica Q in 2022, which is seven years later, and uh, you're wondering if it's a good idea that you pick one up or not, or maybe should you wait for the Leica Q2 to start uh, having lower prices, then this video is for you. We're gonna walk through the entire menu system. I'll show you some of my favorite settings, how I shoot with it. And um, maybe that'll help you decide if in 2022, it's still a good deal for you to buy a Leica Q. And I'm not gonna make you wait till the end of the video to tell you if uh, you should buy it or not, because that'll be up to you. <laughs> uh, Watch the video because we're going to go through all the, the menu and it might help you decide if there's enough functions for you because, um, you know, in 2015, there were many uh, innovations inside this camera that are now basic for today's cameras. And um, so do I regret paying $3,700 Canadian roughly 26 to 2800 US for this camera, not one second. I haven't looked back, not even when some checks bounce, I still don't look back. <laughs> I love it. I bought this in the June of 25th this year. And seriously, I've never gone out shooting as much as I do with this camera. And I have many, I have a whole bunch of TLRs, which I really have fun with. I have my uh, Nikon Z6 II that's filming me right now. I have another few Nikons in my room. And uh, this Leica here, every day I go out shooting with it. So if you ask me if I'm happy, if it was worth the investment, oh, it was worth my investment, yes. Because it's like I wake up thinking about, oh, I gotta go out and shoot with this thing. And I picked up this gray, uh, anodized version because there was two for sale on marketplace one black one for the same price and this gray one and the black one had you know it seemed to have lived quite a bit and um, this one I looked at the the person's house on street view and it was a nice house when I got there the, there was not a spot of dirt on their car lawn was mowed the house was really neat and i figured well the camera's probably going to be in a better shape than that black one that sure probably had more use so i would have probably preferred the black one but i'm i, I kind of like the gray one now because everybody has that black one <laughs> all right so without any further ado let's get into the menu system and uh, hey just for fun hit that like button and uh Maybe you can subscribe to that channel of mine because I'm gonna... I want to post a whole bunch of uh, Leica videos. I wanna go out shooting whenever it doesn't rain or if it's not too hot. So that would be pretty cool to have a bunch of followers watching my videos. And since Instagram is sort of turning into this reels platform trying to get into the TikTok thing uh you know instagram is not so much a place to show photos anymore so i thought maybe i could make videos of all the photos i take with the leica so that's probably how i'm going to start sharing my videos so um let's get into the menu system okay so here it is this is the front view. I put a, um, a Leica UV filter on it. Otherwise, I wouldn't put a, fil a UV filter because I think, you know, it affects the quality of the images. So I don't normally put UV filters unless it's made by the company itself, never third party. So here's that Leica Semilux 1.7 28mm lens fixed to the camera so if you like to interchange lenses you might not be satisfied and here is that ring that goes on there that is uh, 
rather typical to Lakers. Screw them on and then just when it stops, look at it, it's perfectly square. <laughs> That's how great of engineering this camera is. And here you see the aperture modes. That goes from 1.7 all the way up to f16. We press a little button here to activate the manual focus and then it'll focus manually. Then you press the button again to lock it back into autofocus mode. Here we have the macro ring so you can slide this and you can see the dials change. The numbers change here in accordance to the macro and when you're in macro mode your f-stop will be 2.8 and once you go back into normal mode then you can go down to 1.7 so you can see I put some tape here here and inside the door here because um, this camera is not weather sealed and uh, there's been issues about dust getting into the sensor and uh, a whole bunch of people on YouTube mentioned that it be it helps to tape those off so I did here we have the shutter speed this is all pretty self-explanatory so we have the single shot and continuous mode when you turn it on I tend to leave it at single shot unless I do portrait photography which I'll leave at continuous record mode and then here's the uh, this for now it's a uh, compensation exposure compensation but you can set it to auto and it'll do other functions when necessary so now let's look inside the menu we have the play button which we can access like this and, and see our images and when you press in the middle you can get rid of the you know you can get rid of the info and one thing that's cool about this camera is you could just go down like this and you get, you get your um, you can access and then you go back up and you're in camera mode again now of course we have delete button don't need to talk about that we have the function button and here in the function see I, I got exposure set metering which I always leave at spot but if we press and hold the function you, you you can assign different menu items in the function button so by default it's white balance so if I set white balance and when I hit it I can adjust my white balance so let's say I say auto white balance set the function again and uh, say uh, exposure metering then I hit it and I can set my exposure metering right so uh, you can assign the menus you want in the function button here you have the ISO that's pretty easy then new to the 3.0 upgrade update you get to have seven favorite items in the, before you get into the main menu so what I have set is the focus which I normally leave to single shot because in continuous focus it seems to shop around for something to focus on so I leave it at single autofocus mode one point you have multi-tracking tracking phase detection auto touch <clears throat> touch and release I leave it at one point assist lamp I have that on uh, manual focus assist well you do what you want with that focus peaking settings AF mode like we mentioned exposure metering like I said I leave that at spot metering file format that's what you have DNG JPEG or JPEG plus DNG like any other camera video resolution you're only at 1080p 60 frames max but it's not a video camera go with Sony if you want that user profiles well you get some profiles you can manage your profiles rename export or import profiles and WLAN not like uh, the newer cameras where you could just leave it in your bag and uh, log into it with your uh, your phone app this one you have you actually have to turn it on and put and activate the LAN to be able to connect it to the photos app and then we get into 
the menu, main menu. And we are new to the 3.0 upgrade again. We have five pages. So digital zoom, that's where you can set 35 millimeter crop or 50 millimeter. I leave it at 28 because I'll crop in post if I need to crop. Focus, that's all the settings of the focus. Exposure compensation, set the dials here. We have exposure metering, of course. Bracketing, if you ever need to bracket. I use that sometimes, rarely, but you know, it's there. Continuous shooting, medium, low or high. I leave it at medium because uh, I only do like a few shots and it'll, the buffer will s slow it down actually really quick. Self timer, flash settings, image stabilization on. Sometimes I turn it off. Exposure preview, this is a program Aperture, shutter, or manual, so I leave it at that. Electronic shutter extended. This is new to the 3.0 upgrade. It was always either off or always on, and they added extended. Whatever that means, I leave it at extended. So if you know if they added it, it must have a special utility. Scene modes, you know, time lapse, panorama, and all that stuff, like in any other camera white balance of course you, you, you if you want you can um, you can uh, set your white balance like that here or the presets of course photo file format we talked about that jpeg resolution jpeg settings here's where you can uh, choose srgb adobe or whatever contrast it's not complicated settings like uh, the newer cameras but I mean this is not meant to be complicated it's meant to go out and shoot so video resolutions video settings you have all that which I you know I leave it standard and everything on because I don't do video with this acoustic signals I have the shutter sound off key click off uh, autofocus confirmation, I leave a little beep beep there, you can turn it off if you want, and the volume is low, so. Auto ISO, I leave it at 1600 maximum, it goes up to 50,000, but I leave it at 1600, I never need to go higher than 1600, and I don't want to anyways, it's not my type of photography. Auto review, 3 seconds, but if I go out on the shoot, I'll turn that off, because I don't want to wait 3 seconds before I can take my other shot. Power saving on, five minutes auto off, and one minute LCD off to save the battery life. Here you can customize the controls. Like I said, edit favorites. This is the favorites that you get in the, in the, the seven, you get to choose seven favorites in your menu. Function button in live view. Here's where you set on or off what you want in the function button here. Mode lock photo view. This is uh, when, if you want to uh, be able to take pictures while you're recording, I leave it at off. Thumb wheel here, it's set to auto. It could be only exposure compensation, I leave it at auto. And then the zoom lock button right here, I have it set. You could either the digital zoom, which is the crop modes, but I set it at auto exposure lock because I shoot spot metering and uh, one point autofocus because I want to control the exposure of my shot so I'm gonna align the camera to the exposure I want then I lock it and then I will you know set my composition and then I'll take my shot so I leave that this button here at auto exposure lock some might want the autofocus lock you set it as you want and uh, date time, display settings, this where, see the EVF sensitivity, I have it at high and it is very sensitive. And this here is unmatched, what you see through this EVF, still to this day, I find that nothing matched what you see in here. Anyways, LCD, photo live view setup level gauge if you want it on I like to have that on the grid 
I'll have that on. Play mode set up. If you want it to be clipping or not, I, I don't like that clipping, so let's turn that off. Reset image numbering language, HDMI. You can format camera information and the WLAN. And that's it. Now, let's check that WLAN. We activate that. And now we'll go into our Photos app. So yeah, like I said earlier, you have to leave this on in order to connect. So see, I'm connected now. And you can, you know, you can scroll through your images like that. So, and then you can choose to either download it, a preview, which is a crappy JPEG, but it's just for preview, or you can download the original one. And, or you could always, uh, yeah, select the file and then you get to share it. And one thing that's cool is that once you've downloaded it, then you have the, the, the Leica gallery, you could just select it and then hop right into Lightroom and then uh, you get your image, you get to edit it in Lightroom and whoosh, hop it over to Instagram or wherever you want to share it. So that's pretty cool. So back to the Leica app, that's that. And you also get to, you know, control your, uh, your camera. And that's that. And then you can disconnect it right here. Cut the connection. And that's it. So there you have it. That's the menu system. That's the walkthrough of the Leica Q. This awesome 2015 camera. And uh, I hope it helped you decide whether or not you should pick one up. Now let's talk about something. Let's discuss a little subject here. You see, camera companies, any company for that matter, but camera companies have to keep developing and they keep pushing the limits of the sensors, of the autofocus, of the eye detect, of the ISO. Uh, they push megapixels. Now we're up to 60 megapixels, um, sometimes even more. And people are all hyped about the ID and the camera companies make us really believe that we need those new specs so that we absolutely need that new camera. They make us believe that now that they have that new camera out, our old gear is out of date, but that is not a fact. That's just marketing because they have to keep selling. This, ca this camera here, 24 megapixels, it's got the best dynamic range you can think of. Far better than a 60 megapixel camera. And uh, just because a new camera comes out with 256 ISO, 1000 ISO, doesn't make this one out of date. This one didn't stop taking great pictures when the Q2 came out, not at all. It's still the same high quality photographs I get out of this, even though there's new functions. The only thing that would make me buy the Q2 is the weather seal. Today it's raining and I, I would have liked to go out in the rain and, and shoot, and I didn't because I was scared to, you know, that, to hurt the camera. Other than that, there's nothing wrong with a seven-year-old camera. It takes awesome photographs. And I mean, remember that the greatest photographs of all times have been shot with cameras like these. If we pick up a photo book from a Fan Ho or whoever, we're looking at photographs that cross that travel through time and they were shot with cameras like these so because sony and nikon and canon want to beat each other up with uh, new specs it does not make this camera out of style at all anyways thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed this video even if you didn't hit that like button just for fun <laughs> won't hurt you Boop, just like that <laughs>
All right, see you next time.